Let's take a look at this problem. We have five real numbers A, B, C, D, and E, with sum equal to 8 and the sum of squares equal to 16. Find the maximum value of E. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. This is the question modified from one of the problems in the Singaporean Math Olympiad. And in that question, it was actually a short question, so it was just answer only. And the question was asking for the maximum value of the floor, of the value e under the floor function. But the argument required is the same. So if it's just a short question, then my intuition would be taking the other four variables a, b, c, and d to be equal. And in that case, we will have, say, 4a plus e equals 8, and 4a squared plus e squared equals 16. Now that's solvable because we can just say that a equals 8 minus e over 4 and put that into the quadratic equation. So 4 times 8 minus e over 4 all squared plus e squared equals 16. Then simplifying, we have e squared minus 16e plus 64, all divided by 4, because 4 over 4 squared is just a 4 at the bottom, plus e squared equals 16. And eventually, we have 5e squared minus 16e plus 64 equals 64. So, it's actually very easy. So in that case, e is either 0 or 16 over 5. Then apparently, if we take e equals 0, then a, b, c, and d would all equal to 2. While for this, they will all be equal to 8 minus 16 over 5, all divided by 4. And that's 6 over 5. So apparently, this would actually be um, probably the minimum. It's just a um, it's just a guess. Okay, at this point, might this might be a, a minimum, and this might be the answer that we want. So intuitively, I would just pick the number sixty over five as the answer if it was a short question. But what if I'm going to write a formal proof about this? So in fact, we can we can write the following which is that you notice if we multiply this by 2 okay it's a claim a very easy claim it's always greater than or equal to a plus b all squared and the proof for this is simply just to subtract one by the other And you will get a minus b all squared, which is always non-negative. So you have the claim. Now from this, you can say that you can say that from the claim, this is larger than one half of a plus b all squared. And similarly, we have c squared plus b squared is at least one half of c plus d all squared. So therefore, I can even say, by adding the two inequalities, we have one half of a plus b squared plus c plus d all squared. Now that is also at greater than or equal to half of one half of a plus b plus c plus d all squared. using the claim again. Now you have built an inequality relating the sum of squares and the square of the sum. Of course you can just um, summarize the, 
everything I wrote above with Cauchy Swartz inequality. But if you haven't learned about this result yet, the things written in blue will be the way to show this, to show the results, show the inequality. Now from this inequality, I can proceed with Hence, a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared is actually 60 minus e squared, and that will be greater than or equal to a quarter of 8 minus e all squared. And you can simplify from this, it's just an inequality about e, so it should be enough for us to get what we want, which is the maximum value of e and we've returned to the same expression e squared minus 16 e but this time we have an inequality that's less than or equal to 0 I'm oh, sorry it's 5 e squared I've missed it 5 so we've proved formally at this part that the minimum value is 0 this is the minimum well, this is the maximum. So this is our final answer, 16 over 5.